Hi guys, I have a book haul for you today. I have tons of books. This is less than half of them. Basically, this is not going to be my chess book collection. It's just going to be a haul of books that I got recently. For a full disclaimer on the books that I'm about to talk about, I did not actually pay for any of them. I'm really, really, really lucky I was in the right time, uh, at the right place at the right time, and I got them all for free. I was playing the 46th Guernsey Chess Festival festival um, last week and basically they had been donated they had donated um, loads of books to the club and they just didn't have the capacity to store them so uh, in between rounds players were able to go and look through the books take home the ones that they thought would be you know interesting and then I think what's going to happen to the remainder of the books is I think they're either going to charity or they're going to be auctioned so um, I was very very happy very lucky to be able to give some of these books a home so the first book I want to talk about is The Amateur's Mind by Jeremy Silman this is one that's recommended before reading How to Reassess Your Chess which I also have uh which is this one with the horse on the with the knight sorry on the front um I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with this one uh Amateur's Mind I think is slightly more accessible but I skipped it I saw it there and I was like okay I should grab it my friend Tom said that it's still really useful and um, so I haven't looked too much into it yet, but I really like the way that someone writes. I think it's really uh, engaging compared to some things which can be a little bit drier. And then the other Silman book I got was the How to Reassess Your Chess workbook, which is essentially a companion book to How to Reassess Your Chess with uh, exercises and problems. So basically it's interactive. I'm looking forward to going through this one. I think it is a different edition to my copy of How to Reassess Your Chess, but I don't think that will matter too, too much, hopefully. Uh, and thankfully it has not been written in too much. A little bit. A lot of these books have underlining and some notes, which I find really charming it's really endearing to see other people putting little reminders for themselves in these texts but thankfully there are no answers in it so I will still be able to complete all of the uh, tasks so these are all my Jeremy Silman books now how to reassess your chest being one that I already had the next one I got is this one on the modern Benoni. This is actually a book for a friend that I picked up. So this one is going to be in my possession for a very short period of time. But aside from the fact that it's pink, uh, obviously something that I look for in a book, there's this little sheet in the front which tells you the errors in the book print that should be amended, which I think is really funny and cute and just quirky. Uh, and all these old books have the nice typewriter font, which is something I enjoy. I know this is pure aestheticism but uh as this is a, a book in an opening I don't play a book that I'm not going to be holding on to that is why I picked it <laughs> um uh, it's super cute and um I think my my friend will really enjoy it uh it may not be super helpful anymore on the basis that I believe it's from the 70s and the theory will be quite out of date but it's still a really charming book and I believe it is in um, algebraic notations. The next book I'm going to talk about is this one on romantic chess openings uh, by Vladimir Zagorovsky. I'm really sorry, I'm probably butchering a lot of these. This one I got in addition to the next one, uh, Planning in Chess, they're from the same series, I believe, by, but by different authors. And um, I thought this was actually going to be more... Um, attacking gambiting stuff but this is um, basically openings which come out of e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 which is you know a lot of openings that covers one in particular that I'm playing recently is the scotch gambit which is included in this book in addition to the scotch game which is slightly less exciting um, but it also has the Evans gambit uh, two knights joker piano Hungarian defense four knights Ponziani and the Three Knights. So I thought it would be fun again. So this one is from 1982. And I know, I know, I know a lot of people will say these books are so out of date. You should engine check everything now. Um, but I'm around 1600. I'm not playing at the top level. So even if some of the theory is out of date, I don't think it's going to be too, too uh, catastrophic for me and my chess games. I think there's still a lot I can learn. They are, again, super cute. 
Okay, what I mean when I'm talking about cute books here is uh, I have a I have an English degree, uh, so I'm a, I have this um, book fetishism. Book fetishism. You know, like there's something really tactile and aesthetically pleasing about a nice book. Uh, I don't really feel that way about like studies or um, the analysis board on on my computer. So chess books kind of have that different. Um, the di they have different connotations for me with regards to study. Uh, I think I get in a different headspace. I think um, I'm much more able to disconnect from uh, social media and my distractions that I have. Um, whereas if I'm going to study chess and I'm going to study chess on my computer, I think I struggle a little bit more than I do with reading a book. This next one is on planning in chess by Shannon's flesh. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. Um, basically, he wrote about the Smith Mora in some other texts, I believe. But this one on planning, I thought would be very relevant to me because I'm still at that point where sometimes, just sometimes, you get out of an opening it can be a little bit difficult to form a plan, and you don't want to play just like reactive chess based on your opponent's moves. You don't want to play waiting moves to then f let your opponent have time to get the first plan so coming up with a plan is sometimes something I struggle with it's definitely something I think I've improved on this year I think if you asked me 12 months ago I would say um I don't know I'm just kind of moving pieces but this is still very relevant to me uh, and to probably most intermediate players and again it's got some cute notes from its previous owner in it the next book is on the queen's gambit accepted it's an openings booklet so essentially it's just a big collection of annotated games and i told one of my friends recently i've never purchased or gone through an annotated games book and they were horrified i know i, know I technically didn't purchase this one but I am really interested because I think sometimes uh, looking at top level games, it can be really difficult to understand always what the plans are. But when they're like specifically annotated and when they're in book form, you actually kind of have to set them up on a board, which is really helpful, I think, because if I'm looking at them in a YouTube video or online, then it's kind of passive and I'm not actually thinking too much about where the pieces are. So having it in a book, I do plan to sit down with a hot chocolate uh, and set my nice uh, chessboard up that I got for myself last Christmas, go through the annotated games books that I have now. I actually was learning the Queen's Gambit Accepted with Grandmaster Irina Crush this summer uh, prior to going to play in the Chennai Olympiad. And we had some great lessons on it. I was really interested in it because I've been struggling for such a long time to find an opening I like to play against D4. And uh, so I need I need to actually look at the theory because uh, I have kind of neglected D4 since then. Uh, I just came back from a tournament yesterday and I didn't play a single game against d4. All of my opponents played e4 or something random. So uh, I really get very little experience in it at like the club intermediate level, meaning that I'm much less likely to study it. But it does come up and when it comes up, I don't want to be caught off guard. So I'm looking forward to looking into this openings booklet. This one is by Andrew Martin, who I believe is an international master and has... Uh, recently, December 1988, finished second in a GM tournament in Brussels. So I'm not sure what he's been doing lately. Um, so this next one that I got is actually uh, something I have to say I chose purely based on the aesthetic of the book. I don't play the Roy Lopez. I don't play e5 so this one I think is one that I'm planning on gifting to a friend or maybe a viewer I'm not sure if I have any friends who enjoy the Roy Lopez but I really like the cover I thought it was very retro um so it's 500 Roy Lopez miniatures by Bill Wall and people always ask me what miniatures are and so this is okay this definition is 20 moves or less that's really short I've definitely heard it going up to 30 but these 500 games are always 20 or fewer moves so I think they're about openings going wrong things like that I really enjoyed 
the layout. Um, to be honest, these are just games. There is no annotation. The next two that I got are actually both for the English opening, which is 1C4, something I've been playing for almost a year now, actually, and still don't know what I'm doing. But um, it is the English opening, classical and Indian variations, and the English opening, symmetrical. And one thing I do find is that when people don't want to prep against the English, they will just play symmetrically. And sometimes it can be a bit difficult to get an edge Um if you if your opponent is copying everything you do these two again are part of uh what must have been a set i'm not sure if there were others in the set uh they are by the same person international grandmaster um vladimir Bag bagiro these are annotated games books this one is from 1995 uh i believe so these ones are more recent which is kind of funny saying 1995 is more recent uh because it's still before i was born and the theory again in all of these books is going to be probably to some extent outdated again i don't think it's that relevant at the intermediate level you should always probably uh, like engine check your repertoire if you're learning a specific like theoretical line um i mean i'm guessing that you'd put that in some kind of study online anyway so uh i'm not too worried about going wrong especially in the symmetrical english with theory I actually do have a book on the English opening already, but these go more in depth into specific variations. I know I said earlier in the video that I was playing the Scotch Gambit. That is something that's very recent for me. Uh, I decided a while back, about a year ago, with my coach, who I'm actually about to start having lessons with again after a long hiatus, JJ Lang, uh, after I told him I needed to learn a new opening and I wanted to learn C4, and he was like, okay, and I got quite a lot of backlash actually, because a lot of people were like, oh, you shouldn't play C4 under 2000 strength, you just shouldn't do it, it's too complicated, and I was like, oh no, you're ridiculous, um, <laughs> And so was JJ. JJ was like, oh, it's okay. You know, you have lots of positional strengths. Um, but you know what? I hate to say it. I think maybe they were right. Uh, I don't actually think that the opening uh, itself is too complicated. I think that one thing that can be difficult is really, really long term strategic planning in the English uh, at the intermediate level. And it's something that's taken quite a lot of time and a lot of classical games to realize is that just sometimes it can be a really, really, really long grind to try to get any kind of advantage or to try to start any kind of attack so uh, that's kind of why I'm thinking of switching over to e4 which I know a lot of people have feelings about it being the best opening and all uh, but uh, we'll see how that goes and I will I'll update you guys if you're interested I still think that there is value in uh, having a couple of different openings up your sleeve and c4 is not something I intend to ditch entirely so all of these last ones are booklets and they're all really old so I'm gonna go through them with you uh, quickly one by one. Uh, I got these because I was so sad about the thought of them kind of going to charity and being abandoned and being left behind and um, so I thought that they had to come home with me, come home safe with me because some of them are a little bit, you know, some of them have seen better days and I think they needed some, uh, uh, some care and some love. This one is from the 1960s 62 Curacao fifth candidates and as you can see she's coming apart at the seams a little bit she's very relatable but these are essentially just uh basically they're games they're not annotated uh typed and printed these are the only books that I got which are in descriptive notation so I got these kind of more for like historical value I don't intend by any means to sell them or anything like that um but I got them for you know to keep and keep safe uh, not so much for studying whereas every book that I've shown you up until now I definitely got with the idea of improving so the next one I have is this Capablanca memorial tournament from Havana 1965 with a nice knight on the front and again this is just complete games Sadly, some of these have been written in, but maybe that adds to the charm. I definitely won't be writing in them myself. 
but it's nice to know that they were loved and you know actually look through and not just sat on the side like some books um <laughs> I'm guilty of doing that myself these are just really retro and are going to be a great part of my new chess book collection this is the tiniest book that I got hold of. It's this booklet on the USSR versus Hungary, 1955, 32 games. This is probably the oldest one, I think, that I got. And again, these are little games. Actually, this one being from the USSR is in uh, algebraic notation, which I'm really happy about. And it's even got little um, like pictures of the pieces, like on uh, chess.com, Lee Chess, whatever platform you use. Uh, so it's really, really accessible. It even has diagrams for key moments for critical positions. It tells you the opening at the beginning of each one. So this one is really sweet. This next one is from the 22nd USSR Chess Championship. And this one's published by British Chess Magazine. I'm not sure the year, actually. This one is kind of... <laughs> she's kind of coming away from the seams as well. You have the table of results. And this one is by international master Harry Gollenbeck. And this is uh, a guy that my dad said he had a chess book by um when he was a kid so I've just googled and I think this was from 1961 but I was also googling the author Harry Gollenbeck because I wanted to see if any of the people who wrote these books which were like international masters at the time became grandmasters or anything like that any curious things but I did learn that Harry Gollenbeck was also a wartime code breaker which is really interesting it doesn't have move by move analysis but it isn't just uh notation um this one is also in algebraic which is really cool this one is from palma de mallorca 1972 slightly more recent and it is just um basically names no annotations really apart from a couple of double x glams and a couple of diagrams this one is one of the briefest I don't know how many rounds these kinds of tournaments have but it lists all of the players some of the players we had in this tournament were Korchnoi, Anderson, Aberbach. This next one is from 1967 the championship of the Russian republics and I don't really know anything about some of these tournaments this one is just uh, games no annotations we have um I think actually the pieces written in, okay, these, this one's not in English. A couple of the books actually that I saw were in um, multiple different languages. There were ones in Russian, there were ones I think in German, but I could be wrong. But this one was also published in England. So it's really curious to me that it is not in English um, algebraic notation but it's super cute. No diagrams here, but this one has stayed pretty much intact. Another one that is not in English from 1961. This one has managed to stay together in its bindings. Again, maybe it helps me out here that these are not annotated games. They are just lists and lists of games from the tournament. They all start with the player list. This one is on the front and uh, the dates of the tournaments. So these are just really nice kind of mementos of the events. This last one here is also a Capablanca memorial from 1962 in Havana. We've got a picture of Capablanca on the front. And again, these are unannotated games. It tells you the opening. We have a Philidor here. We have a King's Indian uh, with Mr. Nidorf playing as black. Uh, and yeah, so these are just really exciting for me. I'm sure a lot of these games or almost all of them are probably available to read online. This one is also coming apart at the back here. Really exciting, uh, just a little snippet of history. So these are all of these tournament booklets that I managed to get hold of um, and I'm gonna take very good care of them, don't worry. 
I will talk finally about two last books which I didn't actually get from the Guernsey tournament. These ones I only got yesterday but I thought because I got them recently I should talk about them and my dad got both of these actually for me from an auction. Uh, I don't think he paid very much. I think it was maybe a pound per book. This one is The Immortal Game by David Schenk. And it's a history of chess. So this is not a chess improvement book, whereas pretty much everyone apart from the games booklets I showed you were. So this is different. This is one for, I guess, when you're feeling like doing chess adjacent reading. Uh, and I'm really intrigued by it. I don't have any chess history books really aside from Chess Queens by Jennifer Chahadi, which is an amazing book. It's my favorite chess book. Uh, but that is specifically about women's chess. This one isn't, so it will definitely be uh, covered. The last book that I have to show you is The Times, Even More Complete Chess Addict. And I was actually intending to bid in an auction a couple of weeks ago, which included a pretty nice uh, wooden board and then four different books, which uh, did include this one, but then I actually missed the auction. I forgot about it. Uh, so <laughs> this is this isn't the particular book that I really, really wanted. There was this one really sweet um, old one in old notation, but I wanted it just for collection's sake. This one is, however, I believe out of print. I believe maybe both this one and uh, The Immortal Game might both be out of print. I'm not sure. But uh, this is, again, I think, another kind of chess history book. It is not so much a chess improvement book at all. There are definitely diagrams and games in here, but it's mainly text talking about chess history. We've got royals. We've got greatest chess players. We have politicians who play chess, all sorts of things. Um, so this is one that I'm also really interested in and I'm really grateful to have them because most chess books out there that I get recommendations for are for improvement only. And as somebody who loves books for the sake of books, that is not always what I'm after. That is all of the books that I have got my hands on in the past week. I hope you enjoyed looking through them with me. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I will do my best to answer. If you want um, any more details uh, about the books, eye bands, whatever, I can do my best to reply. If you enjoyed this, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I do mainly post uh, clips from my Twitch channel where I stream chess five days a week and uh, fun chess content but I am a book lover and I do hope to talk more about books with you guys if it's something that you're interested in because it's definitely something that I'm interested in. Thank you so much for watching if you watched all the way to the end. I will see you soon.